Hello, my name is Jessica Riley. I'll be a senior in the Department of Chemical Engineering. I am currently working for Professor Emiola Adefeso in her cell adhesion and drug delivery lab. And currently, I'm studying the effects of marijuana on the immune system. And I'm doing this specifically uh, for the purpose of medical marijuana becoming legalized now and uh, seeing if it's going to compromise the immune system at all. Um, so first, I'm going to talk a little bit about the immune system. Um, so cells in the blood interact with the endothelium. And so in a normal human artery, which is this visual right here, uh, you can see the inner lining is the endothelium. So it's the inner lining of blood vessels, and it expresses chemicals in response to inflammation. Um, and I'm specifically looking at neutrophils, which is, or cells in the blood. And so they're the first cell to respond to inflammation. And so neutrophils are a type of white blood cell, and they have receptors on the surface of, of their, their cell, and those receptors bind to the endothelium. So this is a quick uh, so schematic, a rough schematic, of how the neutrophil and the endothelial wall interact. Um, so in this picture, you can see the receptors on the cell surface, specifically L-selectin and Cytolus X right here. Um, and then on the endothelial wall, these specifically proteins are expressed during inflammation. And so these, this L-selectin uh, forms a bond with these proteins with a very low affinity. So what happens is that that, that bond forms. And then uh, once another bond can form, that bond breaks. And so that's the effect of rolling. So uh, that's these three responses right here. Um, there are three, three ways that cells can respond uh, during inflammation, and so cells can roll along the endothelium, and that's what I just described. And they also adhere to the endothelium, and then they can also transmigrate through the endothelium, which means that they just physically go, move through and fix whatever problem is there. So uh, next I'm going to talk about my experiments. Um, so all experiments were done in vitro, which means they were done out of the body in a flow environment to stimulate blood flow through the arteries. So I use a flow chamber, which is um, just a little circle, but it's really small and you can't really see it. And there's an inlet and an outlet. And so the inlet is isolated neutrophils from blood. And uh, we flow uh, those white blood cells, so the neutrophils, over cultured cells, which is this visual right here. Um, we culture these cells in the lab. And they express similar chemicals uh, of, that, of the endothelium so during inflammation. So this just represents, these cells right here represent uh, your artery during inflammation. So next I'm going to show a video of the, types of, uh, the type of rolling that we see in the lab. So these are white blood cells over this endothelium. So the white circles are the neutrophils, which is the blood. Um, flowing over the, the inflamed endothelial wall. Um, and so there are a bunch of white blood cells that are actually moving past that don't bind or don't roll. Um, and you obviously don't see those because this is very magnified. Um, but this is just an example of what some of them can do. And during the total immune response, some of these would actually bind and not, I'll play it again, some of them would bind and not roll like that. And then they would eventually move through, and that's when the problem would be fixed within your body, or at least within your artery. Um, so what I do from these videos is I calculate an average rolling velocity um, of the neutrophils. And I look at physiological shear rates, which is just the flow rate um, from 1 to 15 dynes. Uh, and that's, that's about what you would find in the body. And so this chart um, is about what we would expect. So as the shear rate increases, or the shear stress increases, um, the rolling velocity increases, so the neutrophils actually move faster until a pretty high shear rate where they just stay about the same. Um, so next I'm going to talk a little bit about THC, which is the main constituent of marijuana. So THC binds to two possible receptors on the cell surface. There's a CB1 receptor and there's a CB2 receptor. And so this visual right here shows that uh, CB1 receptors are primarily found in the brain or in the central nervous system. And the CB2 receptors are found in circulating blood, which is part of the immune system. And so neutrophils, because they're found in blood, 
are part of the or are part of the immune system, and they have expressed CB2 receptors on their cell surface, which means that THD should have an effect on neutrophil activity. So that's what our hypothesis is. We just don't really know what that effect will be. Um, and then this is just another example from literature. So synthetic molecules are used uh, to test the specific activity of CB2 receptors found on neutrophils. So that's what this JWH133 is down here, and this is the chemical that I use. Um, it's got the same, the same uh, components as THC, but it just doesn't, or doesn't bind to the CB1 receptors in the blood cells, or in the uh, brain cells. So um, this is a relative migration level right here through the endothelium wall. And as you can see, with increasing amounts of this JWH, uh, the migration decreases. So that proves that, or that at least suggests that THC should have a negative effect on cell interaction with the endothelium. And so we're thinking that it should inhibit the immune system. Um, so what I'm going to do next is duplicate that experiment and see if I can get similar results. And so once I can, then I'm going to do that flow experiment again uh, with the neutrophils rolling past the endothelium and try and see if the rolling is increased or decreased, or at least the rolling velocity. And so if the rolling is slower, then our conclusion is that the immune system is compromised. If there's really no effect on the rolling, then we really can't form a conclusion, and we'll have to do further experiments. And if the rolling is increased, then that means that the immune system response is actually enhanced, and that would be a good thing. So um, the good thing about this research is that it's really never been done before. Nobody's ever really taken circulatory blood and put it in a flow system. Uh, with THC, everything's done static before. So not really sure what results I'll get, but hopefully I'll get them soon. Yeah. Um, thank you for your time.